Welcome. In this segment, we will discuss the important relationships between oral and systemic health. When considering the relationship between oral and systemic health, the oral cavity must be viewed as an integral component of the human body. This connection, which is accepted as fact today by both patients and healthcare professionals, was not always considered in this manner. This concept has laid the foundation for overall improvement of healthcare as physicians, dentists, nurses, and all other professionals dedicated to healthcare now understand the oral cavity provides critical information regarding a patient's overall health condition. This concept was strongly supported by Dr. Lester Burkett, a former dean of Penn Dental Medicine, considered by many to be a founding father of the discipline of oral medicine. The oral cavity and perioral region consists of tissues not unlike other parts of the body. In addition to a complex dentition and its supporting structures, bone, muscle, nerves, fat, mucosa, connective tissue, vascular structures, tendons, and ligaments are found in these regions as well. Due to the presence of all these tissue types, there are a multitude of pathologic conditions that can affect these anatomical structures, which may represent a local and or systemic problem. The bi-directional relationship between oral health and systemic health cannot be overemphasized. Healthcare providers realize the oral cavity may be a potential source of inflammation or infection due to a variety of reasons. When local oral disease is present, it may have a direct impact on the systemic health of the individual. For example, if a patient with diabetes has an oral infection or inflammatory condition, this can potentially affect their nutritional intake and overall well-being, which may further complicate their diabetic status and may necessitate alteration of therapy for their systemic condition. The oral cavity is considered a mirror of systemic health. This may be the initial site of presentation of an underlying medical disorder hematologic disorders, endocrinopathies, and gastrointestinal diseases are but a few types of systemic disorders that may present with initial signs and symptoms localized to the oral cavity. In addition, the oral cavity may serve as a more accessible location for diagnostic testing to detect systemic disease. For example, obtaining a minor salivary gland biopsy of the lower labial mucosa may aid in the diagnosis of Sjogren's syndrome, an autoimmune disease that may be difficult to detect via other diagnostic testing modalities. We will now review clinical examples of patients with oral manifestations of systemic disease. This is a clinical photograph of a patient who presented with excessive bleeding from the gingival tissues. It is important to rule out local factors that cause gingival bleeding, such as gingivitis and or periodontitis. Clinical examination of this patient's gingiva revealed normal, healthy tissue without evidence of dental plaque or calculus. Gentle provocation of the interdental gingival tissue caused significant hemorrhage, which was difficult to control. After all potential local factors were ruled out, the patient underwent a medical workup to investigate possible systemic causes for excessive bleeding, which included basic laboratory evaluation. It was determined that the patient had a platelet disorder, which accounted for the excessive bleeding. The patient was referred to the appropriate medical specialist for further evaluation and management of the hematologic disorder. This is a clinical photograph of a patient who presented with enlarged gingival tissues. This patient had a history of leukemia, which was treated successfully and was considered to be in remission. Clinical examination revealed swollen, edematous maxillary gingival tissue that covered part of the patient's teeth. The affected tissue had a spongy feel on palpation. The concern was that the edematous gingival tissue represented a return of the patient's leukemia. A biopsy of the affected tissue was performed and confirmed the presence of leukemic cells. The patient was promptly referred to his oncologist for further evaluation and management of the systemic condition. This is a clinical photograph of a patient who presented with multiple oral complaints. This patient complained of oral burning, dry mouth, altered texture of the oral tissues, and presence of lesions. Clinical examination revealed generalized redness of the gingival tissues, overall dry mucosa, and white plaques in the maxillary vestibule and buccal mucosa. After extensive investigation, it was determined this patient had poorly controlled type 2 diabetes which accounted for the majority of the patient's oral complaints. After appropriate evaluation and management of the patient's type 2 diabetes by a physician, the patient reported substantial improvement of the oral complaints. 
This is a clinical photograph of a patient with yellow oral mucosa associated with liver disease. The yellow discoloration of the gingiva and oral mucosa was indicative of significantly elevated levels of bilirubin, which indicated progressive liver failure. At the time, the oral tissues demonstrated the only evidence of progressive liver disease. This is a clinical photograph of a patient with a nonspecific ulcer of the gingival tissue that caused significant discomfort. This patient had a previous diagnosis of a neuropsychiatric disorder that led the patient to falsely believe animate and inanimate objects were emanating from the oral tissues. In response to this, the patient used sharp objects to pick at the oral tissues to alleviate the discomfort and to allow for easier release of the perceived objects. It was determined that the patient was not using psychiatric medications as prescribed to treat this condition, and the patient was strongly encouraged to return to the treating psychiatrist for management of the neuropsychiatric condition. The patient was prescribed topical medication to resolve the ulcer and substantially limited the self-harmful behavior while using the appropriate medication regimen prescribed by the psychiatrist. These cases are just a few examples of the oral cavity as a mirror to systemic health. The concept of the bidirectional relationship between oral and systemic health has been reinforced in a report by the U.S. Surgeon General on Oral Health Status in America. In the report, it is stated that many systemic diseases and conditions have oral manifestations. These manifestations may be the initial sign of clinical disease and as such, serve to inform clinicians and individuals of the need for further assessment. This demonstrates that the important link between oral and systemic health has been recognized at the highest levels of healthcare administration and should be incorporated into clinical practice. In this slide, we will review key concepts as it relates to our current discussion. Appropriate patient evaluation, formulating a differential diagnosis, obtaining adjunctive diagnostic testing, and rendering a final diagnosis are all expected of today's modern dentist. Since the scope of dental medicine has expanded beyond the oral cavity, this expectation is considered vital by both patients and healthcare providers. It is of paramount importance for oral healthcare professionals to diagnose an oral condition which may save a patient's life or may significantly decrease any disease-related morbidity. This has been exemplified by the clinical cases reviewed in this segment. The important relationship between oral and systemic health is now one of the cornerstones of the healthcare profession. These concepts are foundational to dental education and greatly emphasize the role of dentists participating in overall health care of patients. This has positively affected general health of the public and has significantly improved the quality of life for many individuals. In conclusion, it is important to understand and appreciate that the oral cavity is a functional unit of the whole and is a window to overall health.